Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to be going over Niagara Light Renders and Blueprints in Unreal 4. This is going to be a little bit of an expansion on the Niagara Blueprint video, and it's definitely going to be an expansion on the Niagara Light Render video. So to get things started, I'm going to right click, we're going to go to Effects to create an emitter, and I'm going to create a template from an upward mesh burst. And we'll give it a name. And right away, we're gonna create a Niagara system from this. But we'll rename it correctly. And maybe I'll actually rename the first one correctly. And we'll open up the emitter. Now, the first things I wanna do is, I wanna to go to Spawn Burst Instantaneous. I'm gonna set this to one. And then the emitter state, I'm gonna change this from once, forever. We're going to delete the add velocity and cone, and we're going to delete scale mesh size. In scale color, we're going to revert the scale alpha so that it's consistent forever. And then in particle state, we're going to turn off kill particles when lifetime elapses. Basically what we've done is we've set up a particle that will just live forever. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the scale color to 150. And under renderer, we're gonna add a light renderer. Now in here on color add, we're gonna change XYZ to one. And we'll save that. And then we're gonna go and place our Niagara system in the world, just to see if it's working. Right away, you can kind of see some light bouncing off of this. You see it's just bouncing off the wall. That works. So I think we're also gonna go in here and we're gonna increase the light radius. We'll set this to something like 10. So the thing that I wanna talk about is in the light renderer, you'll notice that this module compared to many of the other modules, they have variables that have drop downs, and you can change them from a dynamic input to a link input, whatever you want. But in the light renderer, you don't really have those options available to you at all. And this is most likely due to performance or optimization. You know, for example, if you hover over color add, this says a static color. So if it's static, this isn't gonna change. You can't change it. But there are a few ways that we can change this. So the first way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna set up a user parameter. And we can't set up user parameters in an emitter. So we're gonna close out of this and we're gonna open up our Niagara system. And in this blue window, we're gonna click on the plus icon and we're gonna add a float. Then we'll go to the user parameters. You'll see your new float here. And then we're gonna rename this to something like light intensity. And we'll set that default to something like 150 or we'll set it to one. Now we're gonna to go to our scale color and we're gonna change our scale RGB to a float vector from float, and then that value, we're gonna multiply that by another float. And in A, this is gonna be our initial value, our intensity that we want, and then we're gonna multiply that by our user parameter that we just made. So we're gonna click on the drop down on B, and we're gonna look for our light intensity. We'll add that in there. So right now we're doing 150 multiplied by one. And we'll just save that. And now we need to go make our blueprint. So I'm gonna right click, create a blueprint class, and we'll do an actor. And we'll just name this. And we'll open that up. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna add a component and we want our Niagara particle system. And on the right hand, we'll go to the details Niagara. We'll click on that drop down, and we're gonna look for our system that we just made. Add that in there, and you can see that this is working right away. Yeah, that's great. So we'll save that. And now, instead of having our Niagara system out here, we're gonna put our blueprint out here. And you'll see it looks exactly the same, and that light's working. But we wanna animate this light to go away. So we're gonna go set some things up. And we won't need event actor begin overlap or event tick. So we're gonna delete those. The first thing that we wanna do is we want to drag a reference in 
to our Niagara system. And then from here, we're gonna drag off of there and we're gonna type in set and we're looking to set a float. So we now have that. We're gonna set our variable name to user dot light intensity. And we're gonna base this off of an input. We'll do something like K. So when we press K in the keyboard, it's gonna trigger this. But we still need an in value. We need something that's going to animate. So then it's gonna change over time. So I'm gonna create a new timeline. So if you scroll all the way down, you can add a timeline. And we'll just name this to something like curve down. And if you double click on this, you're gonna get a few options in here. You can create a curve from a float, a vector, whatever you want in here. So we're gonna do a float track. We'll call this whatever you want. This can also be curve down, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna right click in here and I'm gonna add a key and I'm gonna start out at zero and that value is gonna be one. And then I'm gonna add another key and I'm gonna set this value to zero over the course of something like two seconds. And we'll make sure that this length is also just set to two. Now back over in our event graph, we're gonna take this curve, we're gonna plug this into here first to play. So when I press this key, it's gonna play it. And then we're gonna update and we're gonna move on to set our variable. But we need that curve data going from one to zero plugged into here. So our curve over the course of two seconds every press that key is gonna go from one to zero. And then it's gonna set this Niagara variable. And that variable is plugged into our scale color. So we're multiplying this 150 by our light intensity. Now the last thing we need to do before we can actually press a key, we need to actually enable inputs on this blueprint. So I'm gonna type in enable input and we need to get a reference to the player controller. So we'll do that, and now we'll compile, and we'll save. Minimize this, and we're gonna go test that out. So I'm gonna play in the selected viewport, and I'm gonna back up. Now I'm gonna press K on the keyboard. And you can see that that light faded, but our color also faded, our scale color faded. So now we have a value of zero on our particle as well. So this is one way to do it, but it may not be what you want to do. So now we're gonna look at the second approach. So in our Niagara system, we're gonna take a look at that light renderer one more time. And if you come down to where it says bindings and you click on this dropdown, you notice that there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Bindings are kind of a topic of their own, but basically what this is showing is all of the parameters that relate to the light renderer, where the light renderer is getting information. But one of the settings in here that's notable is the light radius. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to that scale color and I'm gonna revert this float. I'm gonna get this out of here and I'm gonna leave these at 150, 150, 150. And in the particle update, I'm gonna do set. We're gonna, we're gonna set a new or existing parameter. In this case, we're gonna set an existing parameter and that's light radius. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply. We're gonna multiply this to turn this into two floats and A is gonna be our initial value. And then B, we're gonna change this to our user parameter, which is our light intensity. And we'll save that. So once again, when we press K, it's gonna influence this curve. And this curve is gonna go from zero to one. And that value is gonna be piped in to that Niagara parameter. So let's go see what that does now. So we're gonna play again, we'll back up. We'll hit K on the keyboard. And you can see that light radius go down. This is another way that you can adjust the lights. All right guys, this covers light renders and blueprints. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video.